Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Rune. So today we're going to do Magic the Gathering Top 10, and today we'll be talking about the Top 10 Lander. And now, at number 10, with us kicking off with Lantern of Revealing from Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate, it's a common, that's right, going for a whopping 9 cents. The reason why it's even on this list, well it costs 3 mana, but it adds 1 mana of any color, so that's pretty cool. But then you got that extra ability where it costs four. It says, look at the top card of your library. If it's a light card, you may put it into the battlefield tapped. If you don't, put that card onto the battlefield. You put, put it on the bottom of your library. So you're going to really have some flex with that. And let's move on to number nine. We have Sears Lantern from various sets. It's a common one for seven cents on the market. And this one is kind of similar to the other one. It costs three. Well, add a color to your manifold or pay two and scry one which I think is more of a better ability than one we just saw. So let's move on to number eight. And guess what? We got Ghost Lantern from Commander Legends, Battle for Baldur's Gate. So another Commander Legends kind of card. It's uncommon, and this one is 17 cents on the market at the time of this video. It costs one. It says whenever a creature you control dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on equipped creature with a casting cost of one. So it's one and one. That's actually pretty cool. And then it does have the Blind Spirit Instant Adventure which has nothing to do with the lantern, but part of this card. It says, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So, that's pretty cool and very impressive. But let's move on to number seven, where we got Soul Guide Lantern from various sets. It's an uncommon going for a whopping 12 cents on the market. This one's really cool because it does cost one. It says, when it enters the battlefield, exile target card from a graveyard. Sacrifice the lantern, ex exile each opponent's graveyard, or sacrifice it, draw a card. So it costs one to do that, but I think that picture in itself is really cool. I know it's not a groundbreaking card, but I think it can be quite annoying for some people. So let's move on to number six. We have Geist Light Snare from Innistrad Crimson Vow, or the double feature. It's an uncommon one for 42 cents on the market. This one it can cost one if you do it right. Cost two, so with one island. But it says this spell costs one less if you cast if you control a spirit. And also if it costs one less to cast if you control enchantment. So if you got one or the other, counter target spell is a controller pays three. You can make that cost one if you really choose to. So let's move on to number five. We have Lantern Lit Graveyard from Champions of Kamigawa. It's an well. Uncommon that costs only 26 cents. Well, it costs, well, nothing to put into play because it's a land, but you can tap it to add one mana to your mana pool or add a small four amount to your mana pool. It doesn't untap during your next untap phase. So if you're really desperate, this card can be very helpful, but as you guys know, there are so many more dual lands or non dual lands that are better than this, but it deserves a spot on the lantern cards. So let's move on to number four. We have Rieto Lantern from Conspiracy or Champions of Kamigawa. It's an uncommon that goes for a whopping 18 cents on the market at the time of the video. I have it here. Well, it does cost two colors. And then it, as many times as you want for that three colors, put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. So you can either deck death well, the opponent and you can't be deck death. So I already see potential combos with this card and it could be very interesting. But let's move on to number three. Well, we have Lantern of Insight from various sets. It's an uncommon. This one is almost $2 at the time of this video. It costs one, which is pretty awesome because they most of these, I guess, lanterns do cost. Each player plays with the top card of his or her library revealed. Sacrifice the target player shuffles his or her library. Well, I can just only see this as a combination of something in your deck because although this card alone is not worth it. And that's why it's at number three because it can still do quite damage if you choose to. So let's move on to number two. Well, we have a very playable card called Chromatic Lantern. It's from various sets. It's a rare going for $3.24 on the market. And this one can be very helpful, especially if you're playing the Commander deck, which costs three colorless. Lands you control have tap add one mana of any color to your mana pool or you can tap this artifact and add one mana of any color to your mana pool 
Well, you can't beat that, especially nowadays when there's not a lot of cards that actually add mana other than the land. This is a nice little feature. So let's move on to number one. And at number one, as I just said, is Tegrid's Lantern. It's from Kaldheim. And it is a rare going for $2.73. And it's actually a flip card because it's the god card first and then you have to flip it over. And this one is actually kind of powerful. And I really like the artwork. It costs four men. Target player loses three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. And it costs four mana with no tapping ability to untap it. So you could do this over and over again if you have a lot of mana. I think this card is very powerful. And when this was actually part of the standard rotation, a lot of people play this card. So I hope you guys enjoy the top 10 and have a good day and a good evening.